gird up the loins of your mind. And I'll finish it. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But I want, I want to preach for a little bit this morning on the battle for your mind. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to speak again. Um, Lord, you knew from the beginning of time, Lord, that it would be just this particular group of people that would be here and that this message would be preached. And so, Lord, help me. I'm, uh, I'm always a person in need, Lord. I, I simply am. And I ask that, God, you would, uh, as I yield myself to you, that, Lord, your, your will would be accomplished in, in this service. Uh, Lord, there's nothing I can do within my own, but, Lord, I do know that it's your presence that makes the difference in our lives, and that's what we want. So, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, th th this past Monday, you know, my, my routine is this. I'll, I'll preach or teach something uh, on Sunday, uh, mainly Sunday morning, and then right out of the gate on Monday when I'm in my prayer closet, I, I begin to ask the Lord, what do you want me to preach on this coming weekend? It's, it's just my routine. And the Lord said, I want you to preach what you preached four and a half years ago, uh, the battle for your mind. And I, and I thought, well, you know, I, I've already preached that, and, and, which I have no problem with going back and pre preaching messages over again. Uh, but the Lord, I, I just felt he specifically said, I want you to go back and I want you to preach on the battle for your mind, the battle for your mind. And, uh, and so I... I pulled out my notes and, and uh, you know, I, I, I've got 99% or 99.9% .9 of everything I've ever preached or taught in 42 years. I've, I've got it all chronicled. And, and so it was easy for me to, to, to locate it and bring it out and, and begin to pray about it and, and ask the Lord, you know, to, to help me adjust things that need to be adjusted. And so... You know, that, that, that's where we're at this morning, and I'm sure that somebody in here is going, th this is for you. And let, let, let me say this, that um, out of all the, I've probably got thousands of messages that I've preached down through the years, that out of all the messages that I've preached, this is one of those that, that struck me the most personally. Uh, a lot of times when a minister gets up to preach, you not only preach to others, but you preach to yourself. You wear it first, and 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 I like that. Uh, I, I I do, and so a lot of things that I say when I'm ministering is is simply because I speak experientially. It just you know, I, I'm no different than you are. I sweat like you sweat, and I bleed like you bleed. I have emotions like you have, and I have discouragements like you have, and I have good things that. I, I think it happened in my life <laughs> from time to time, like you have. Amen. But um, the battle for your mind. The mind is the most fascinating feature in our human creation. Psychologists estimate that we entertain 10,000 thoughts per day. That's a lot. When you stop and think about all the decisions that you make, uh, you know, from the moment you get up to the moment you lay down at night. And, you know, if, if you're like me, even while you're sleeping, your mind never shuts down. It just keeps going. But, you know, that's 3.5 million thoughts per year. And if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would most assuredly be condemned by what we think in our mind. Satan knows the power and the capabilities of the human mind. Therefore, he is constantly, consistently attacking the mind with things that are defiled and unholy. Have you ever been in a place where you thought that your mind was going to just let go? I mean, I've, I've been there, and I've shared that a few times from uh, down through the years where the pressure has been so great, the stress has been so great, you just thought, just you want to go out somewhere where nobody can hear you and scream. 
I, I'm, uh, there, there's been times where I, I literally thought I was losing my mind because of the assault that was, that, that was upon me um, from, for battles that I was engaged in, spiritual warfare and et cetera. But it, it's a terrible experience. It, it, it really is when you have that struggle within your mind. The first thing that I want us to look at here this morning is, number one, Satan never gives up in attacking the mind of Christ. He never, he never let up on that. Allow me to share a few powerful illustrations from the Word of God. When Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil for 40 days, Satan appealed to the mind of Christ. Quote, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Cast thyself down off the pinnacle of the temple, and the angels will catch you. Satan took Jesus and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. them all to you if you'll simply fall down and worship me, end of quote. Jesus, as we all are aware of the fact that he rebuked these thoughts that Satan was putting into his mind with the word of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. As Jesus walked this earth in his ministry, oftentimes the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees would try to, to, to do evil or harm against him. But the Bible says that Jesus, knowing their thoughts, knowing their thoughts, he knew what exactly was in their minds. He knew what they were thinking. Matter of fact, Mark 9, 4 says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? He knew exactly what he was up against. One of my favorite stories in, in the Gospels is Mark chapter 5 when there's a man named Legion, and he was in the tombs, and, and he was demonized, and he was, he was just beating himself and in chains, and just a horrible uh, creature uh, of, a, of a human being. And, and uh, when he met Jesus, uh, the Bible says that after his encounter with Christ, he was seated, clothed, and in his right mind. And so the mind is, is, is something that we really need to understand. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he sweat great drops of blood. Why? Because in his mind, the very thought of thinking or drinking from the bitter cup taking upon himself the sin of all mankind, the thoughts of, 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 of that, a, a, a man that was perfectly innocent, free from sin, now the Bible says he's about to become sin, him who knew no sin became sin, that we could be saved. That would be hard to process. When Jesus was going through his trial, the Bible tells us that they placed a crown of thorns upon his head. Why on his head? Because in the, in the head is the mind. They placed that crown of thorns. Of course, when, when, when this was like revelatory to me as I was studying this years ago, I, you know, the, the typology there, that thorn upon uh, his, his head, upon his mind, sanctifies my mind. Amen. It, it, it helps me to know that, that everything that he went through in his thought process, that if I take my thoughts to him, amen, he can sanctify my mind, amen, with the blood that, that he shed for me and for you. When Jesus was going through his trial, when they, after they placed this upon his, his head, when he was crucified out on Golgotha, the, the Hebrew word for Golgotha is the place of the skull. Once again, the mind. Everything evolves around the mind. <laughs> this is simple, but yet it's so profound. When a child is born, what comes out first? The head or the mind. And sometimes I think that these things are so simple 
that it, 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 it goes above our understanding that, but there's something, if you take all the pieces of the puzzle and you bring them in and you, and you, you begin to put them together, you can, you can see that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that our mind is a battlefield. It is a battlefield. Number two, Satan never gives up in attacking your mind. Again, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. If Satan is going to attack the mind of Christ, he's going to attack your mind as well. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they, had, if they attacked his mind, if they attacked his thought process, yours is in the crosshairs of the devil as well. Your mind is the most critical piece of your life. The devil will speak to your mind. He'll say things to you like, you know, you're worthless. You'll never amount to anything. You have no use for anything or anyone. You'll, you'll always be just who you are, as Peter was saying this morning in Sunday school. I'm so glad I'm not who I was, amen, after I got saved. One of the, 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 the greatest things that, that, that really uh, excited me when I, when I gave my heart and life to Christ is Jesus, he, he just came along, saved my soul, uh, made me a new creature in Christ, complimented my personality, complimented my character with his Holy Spirit, amen. He never asked me to be something that I'm not. I'm Mike Metzger with Christ living in my life. That's good, amen, amen. And so he made something out of me. He will tell you things about your spouse. He'll tell you things about your children. He will tell you that you're going to die. Been there, done that. I've even, I mean, that's one of the biggest things he, he, he throws into my mind. And not necessarily my life. I'm not afraid to die. I mean, what are you going to do, threaten a Christian with death? I mean, come on. You know, but what bothers me is when he talks to me about my family members. You know, a lot of times my wife, and she has no idea that I'm going to say this. A lot of times she'll, She'll take Sister Linda home or something, and, 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 and you know, and that, that's all well and good. A lot of times I'll go with her because I don't want her to drive by herself because I, I'm concerned, not so much about her driving capabilities, but I'm concerned about everybody else out there that don't have good driving uh, capabilities. I, I, I heard a story last night, a, a very dear friend of mine. Of course, I haven't talked to him for years. He's a minister. His wife... Um, uh, was in a head-on collision, and uh, uh, the she crossed the center line and killed the the, the gentleman that she hit head-on, and she's just in a real bad way. And uh, it once again, I said all that to say this: that you, you can never you can never be too defensive, watching out for the other person. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan attacked the mind of Eve, causing her to doubt. Hath God really said that? You'd be surprised. I mean, I, this is totally rhetorical, okay? But you'd be surprised at the things that I preach or the lessons that I teach. The devil will whisper in your ear, really? Do you really think that's true? Do you really think that's serious? Ha, come on. Somebody ought to say amen at least to that. Because you know as well as I do that, that, that he, he works on your mind just like he works on, on, on my mind. And, but, but we don't share that part uh, of our life with any, anybody else. Maybe some do, uh, but, but it, it literally happens. Amen. In first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, th this is a fascinating verse. Sometimes in life, if we're not careful, we associate certain words automatically with other words. When I say the word blind, what do you naturally think of? You think of eyesight, somebody that is literally physically blind. But God doesn't say the devil hath blinded the eyes. He doesn't say that at all. 
He hath blinded the mind. Your eyes can tell you what you can do, but it is your mind that will tell you what you will do. The decision maker is right here. Amen. Your mind. Satan is so crafty, he can put thoughts in your mind and make you believe that they are your thoughts. He can put thoughts in your mind that, that uh, cause you to be suspicious of, of somebody else. That cause you to think negative of somebody else. Oh, come on now. You, you should be with me on this. this it happens. It simply does. You'll think negative about me or somebody else. Amen. He'll put thoughts in your mind. Amen. That such negative thoughts and cause you to, to have a, a, a negative, uh, 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 you know, uh, what, what do I want to say? A, a negative outlook on people that are around you when really it could be the furthest from the truth. It happens to me at times. It really does. I'll, something will happen and I'll think negative and then I'll investigate and find out that it, it wasn't that at all. And it kind of humbles a person because you yield your mind to those thoughts that come in that really aren't yours, but they're from the devil. Amen. Right here, right here in this verse, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity, now listen to this, every thought. I have learned that verse, and I have prayed that verse when I have bad thoughts. Uh, and and l l let me say this, and you know, and we're not going to have a testimonial time, but you know, I, I got saved at 24 years old. But the lie, I wasn't raised in church. But up until 24 years old, let's say from from 16 to 24, eight years of my life was really bad. I mean, it was really, really, really bad. And so, you know, th this month here, next week, yeah, next week, I'll be say 42 years. And out of the, in, in those 42 years that I've been serving the Lord, there's hardly ever a day that goes by where he doesn't remind me of something that happened in those eight years before I got saved. It's just constantly there. I mean, it, it, it doesn't get me down. It doesn't, it doesn't discourage me. But he's always got something. And, he, and I like this here. My, my pastor that I got saved under told me this. You know, because I, 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 I expressed myself to him. I said, the devil keeps reminding me about my past. And, and Pastor Ben said, well, whenever the devil reminds you about, his pa about your past, remind him about his future. <laughs> he's going to bake in the lake. You know, and so I, I do that at times when he reminds me about something I did in my past. I say, well, let me tell you about my future. My past is forgiven, but not your future. Amen. It may, maybe I'm the only one that goes through all this stuff. Because most of you in here, you know, the, the vast majority of you weren't, weren't, you were raised in church. You simply were. And I didn't have that privilege. Amen. It's not about guns. It's not about weapons. The battlefield is in your mind. Satan wants control of your mind so that he can use it against God and ultimately damn your soul to an eternal hell. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. The mind. The battle for your mind. Well, number three, how do I get control of my mind? First, you need to understand the spiritual importance of your mind. When God speaks to me or to you, he speaks through the mind. Now, there, there's a lot of people out there that get really emotional and, and believe, you know, I, and I don't want to go down this road, but God doesn't speak to my emotions. He, he, he doesn't. He speaks to my mind. We serve an intelligent God, and I want, I want to serve him intelligently. And so when God speaks to me, he, he, he speaks to my mind. Amen. My emotions are so, uh, you know, so unpredictable. You know, things can happen from day to day that cause my emotions to react or respond in such a way that <laughs> may not be really good. Uh, you know, 
but, but God speaks to my mind. That's a definite. Amen. I don't have to worry about wallowing around in, 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 in my emotions. Amen. Yeah, I, you know, I, I enjoy getting happy. I, I, I'm a jovial person. I love to sing. Amen. I love music. I, I love all those things. And I, I enjoy our song services, our musicians. I, 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 I enjoy it. I, I, I love feeling God in my emotions. Amen. Because, you know, we're made in the image of God. God has emotions. Did you know that? Love is an emotion. God's the God of love. Amen. For God so loved, you know. God, uh, uh, you know, God has an emotion of, of, of hurt and pain, uh, you know, grieving the Holy Spirit. You know, that, that's, that's an emotion and so on. And so, you know, to say that emotions are all wrong is, is not right. But we need to learn not to allow our emotions to govern our directions. Let him speak to my mind. Amen. Speak to my mind, oh God. There's a lot of dumb stuff that goes on in churches today because people believe God is working through, speaking through their emotions. Matter of fact, now I'm talking about how do I get control of my mind. God changes us by changing our mind. In Ephesians 4.23, now this is, this is good. And be renewed by the spirit of your mind. When I got saved, he gave me a new mind. Romans 12.2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of of your mind. Let me ask you this rhetorical question. When's the last time you asked the Lord to touch and renew your mind? It's a process. It, it simply is. That's, it's called sanctification. You know, Lord, renew my mind. Continue to renew my mind. Lord, help my mind. Amen. That's what I want. It's something that we should do. We should practice in our, in our everyday li living. Listen to me. You can change the way you are living by allowing God to change the way you think. Let me say it again. You can change the way you're living right now by allowing God to change the way you're thinking. Whew, he can do it. I mean, we just read you two scriptures, and that's just two of, of, of the many. Amen. God wants control of your mind. The devil wants control of your mind. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Heart in the Hebrew is leb, which means both heart and mind. What you think is what you believe. Now, this is one of those things you're not going to want to hear. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to get it in your mind. What you think is what you believe, and what you believe is what you become. Let me say it again so you can write it down. What you think is what you believe, and what you believe is what you become. That's the way my life was before I got saved. But after I got saved, everything was a new. Amen. It's very simple to understand. Pardon my bluntness here this morning, but you put trash in your mind, trash will come out in your actions. You put pure and holy in your mind, and pure and holy will come out in your actions. Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, what does he say? Think on these things. <laughs> oh, I love the Word of God. I, I, I enjoy taking the Word of God and, 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 and proving the Word of God with the Word of God. Amen. I, I, I just love it. Listen to the Word of God. Satan does not want you to know the unstoppable power of your mind. Did you know that we only use about 
I, I think it's like seven or eight, maybe 12%. I, I think Einstein, they said, was like 17% of his mind. And, and he was intelligent. I mean, I, I don't know if I've, I've ever heard anybody that had over, was using over 20% or, you know, 20% or, or more. And so that means, you know, that, that the, the, the capabilities that, that, that we were created with, you know, and of course, I personally, this is just me, I believe that, you know, in the glorified state, you know, when, when we reach that place, you know, when a, after the rapture or when you die, you know, to, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, you know, 100% of your mind is, is the glorified body. Just being able to see everything 100%. Analyze it 100%. I, 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 I just think that, that that's going to really be neat where you don't need uh, Google, you don't need YouTube or anything like that to figure it out. Hey, man, it's just going to be there just like that. Praise the Lord. But the, 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 the interesting thing uh, 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 about all this, amen, is getting the Word of God in you because it's the Word of God that helps change and uh, turn your mind, especially from bad thoughts. God has so designed us that we cannot, you might think you're an exception to the rule, but we cannot think two things at the same time. It's impossible. So when Satan gives you a negative thought, replace it with a positive thought. It's that simple. I, I do it all the time. That's just part of my routine. Every, every day in life, I, when I have a negative thought, I try to replace it with a positive thought. I don't want to entertain and, and, and yield to that negative thought. I just replace it with a positive thought. Amen. It, it, it takes a little work, but like Peter said this morning, you know, Christianity is really not that easy. It, it, it's not. Uh, it, it's a knockdown, drag out fight. Only, but the, the neat thing about it is I have Christ in me fighting for me. Amen. And, and like Brother uh, uh, Quentin said, we're marching from victory, not into it, but we're marching from victory forward. Praise the Lord. Get the Word of God inside you. David said in Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Once again, the Hebrew word for a heart is leb, which means both heart and mind. How do I get the Word of God in me? <laughs> going where the word of God is preached going to a place where the word of God is taught faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God if you don't want to hear the, God, the Word of God, then you're not going to be a person of faith. You'll have small, little faith. That's not me. It's what the Bible says. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So I want to be around the Word of God because I want to be a man, a woman of faith. Amen. The significance of the loin. Wherefore, gird up the loin of your mind. I thought this is a real interesting metaphor. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. You know, I, I'm not a physician. I, <laughs> I don't pretend to be. I, I know very little about the, the anatomy of uh, you know, the human body, I do know when it hurts and I have to have things <laughs> replaced and things like that. And then I get an education. But, you know, the, the, the loin is, is really interesting. And, and when, I, when I hear loin mentioned in the scripture, I think of honey. <laughs> you know, I, I do because, you know, you, an elk or a deer, you always want them loins. Take care of them. You don't want to you know, hurt them or in any way, shape, or form. But the loin is located in the, in the middle of the back area between the lower ribs and the hips. The muscles in the loins are responsible for rotating the upper body, bending the spine, and moving the legs. Now, this is what's interesting. 
in Scripture, Scripture also carries with it the a reproductive connotation with loins. Not not that it is, but you know when my kids were growing up, uh, there was times where I'd say, "Hey, you're a product of your mother's womb, but you're a product of my loins." I would tell them that. And, you know, you try to put all this together and, you know, and, and uh, uh, the, the strength and, and the, the power. I think it was Job that says in Job chapter 30 uh, where, where he talks about behemoth. And he, he says, behemoth, look at his, the strength in his loins, the strength in his back. Amen. It takes strength to, to have a family. It really does. Uh, people that really want to have a solid family, it takes a lot of strength and effort to make that family work today. It, it, it simply does. But you can do it. Amen. The muscles in the loins are responsible for, 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 for the direction that we go. They're responsible for making you uh, uh, flexible and, and do all kinds of things. Amen. Uh, when men would go to battle in the Bible, they, they would... They would uh, you know, they, they wore robes or tunics back in those days. And when they would go to battle, the, and I've, I've seen pictures of this, I've, I've watched it, they would take their, their tunic and they would pull it up and, they, and, they, and it was made in such a way that they could tie that thing and put it under their belt so that they could run or they could wield their sword or chuck their spears or do whatever. Uh, you know, girding up their loins. Amen. Their, 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 their tunic. Uh, when uh, I believe it was Elijah when he told his servant to go out, he said, gird up your loins and move. In other words, be quick about it. Uh, and, and so they're, 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 you, when, you, when you understand when he says, gird up the loins of your, of your mind, there, there's something here that, that has to, to do with being ready. Amen. You, are, are, are you ready? Always be in a ready state of mind. Matter of fact, if you go clear back to... Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12, I believe it was, on the first Passover when the, when the death angel was going to come through Egypt and the Lord told them, He said, I want you to eat a particular meal and, and, and so on and have your staff in your hand. And He said, have your loins girded. In other words, this is going to happen quick. You're not going to have time to mess around. But be in a, a, a ready state of mind. That whenever these things unfold, your exodus is at hand. Amen. I like what Rick Renner uh, said. Uh, a lot of you know who Rick Renner is. Uh, if we want to be successful in our spiritual lives and truly walk with God, then we must start with dealing with the loins of our minds. In other words, we must seek to deal with all those loose ends in our thinking that haven't yet been submitted to the Word of God or surrendered to the power of the Holy Spirit. He goes on, if we deliberately allow wrong thinking and wrong believing to continue in our lives, we make the same kind of mistake that a runner does who desperately allows his garments to hang down and get caught up in his leg. This is why Peter admonishes, admonishes us to tighten up those areas that the devil would try to grab a hold of and ultimately use it against us. Watch the way you think. You allow God's Word into your mind and it will produce in you three things as I close. Number one, it will govern your speech. It'll govern how you talk. You know, I can tell how spiritual a person is by listening how they talk. I, I, I can. And, and I'm not saying that's a gift or anything. It's just I can tell how spiritual a person is by the way. You know, it, you know it, it, it's like, uh, you know, being a fireman, you know, you know, Somebody, somebody can walk up to Peter and say, hey, I'm a fireman too. And just within a few minutes, you know how far they are in their fire experience. You know, what, what they can do, what they cannot do. Same in the medical field. You know, I, I don't know much about 
the medical field that you know, Peter does, Bo does, Hannah does, and 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 aren't you a nurse too, Susan? Yeah, she's you know, uh, you know, I can come up and start talking things about the medical field, and you'll know exactly how much I don't know, uh, but in just a few minutes. Because, you know, that, that's just the way it is. It's the same way in spiritual things. I can tell a person's spiritual depth by just talking to them uh, uh, for, for a few minutes. Or I can tell the, the spiritual depth of a person by the testimony that they li leave with other people. Ooh. So, the Word of God, if you'll allow it, will govern your speech. Number two, it will guide your sight. Now we're talking about the Word of God. When you're allowing the Word of God, some people, they, 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 they just so struggle with life, but they just, they're, they're, they're so far away from the Word of God. But He'll govern your speech and He'll guard your sight. God's Word will keep your mind from looking into things that you should not be looking into. The internet. And I'm not against the internet. I use it all the time. But there's a lot of bad in the internet. You know what aggravates me? I, so, 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 yeah, yesterday, you know, I was up here at the church praying last night and 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 I'm I, I'm I'm trying to get my focus and write some thoughts down regarding this the battle for your mind. And honey, while, 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 I, I, it, I, while I'm walking and praying, my phone goes off. And so I go and I look at it and it goes, what are you doing right now? And I thought, devil. I hit report, delete and report junk. And it wasn't five minutes. My phone goes off again. Hey, you and I need to talk. Can I come over? <laughs> it delete junk. I mean, it, it just aggravates the fire out of me how, how the internet, I mean, it, it, if a person really doesn't keep their mind uh, girded up, amen, the loins of their mind girded up, there's so many things. I mean, I could have got into anything I wanted to because I was by myself. I could, and, and there's been times, my wife will tell you, where I've responded to them, I give them salvation. Hey, you need to quit, uh, quit doing this foolish stuff, trying to seduce me and give Jesus Christ your life. Amen. And, and I mean, they, they usually stop, uh, uh, you know, coming. But I, I, I use it as a witnessing tool. I, I give them something, but last night wasn't the time for that because I was trying to have my, my quiet time with the Lord. And maybe you don't ever have those kind of things, but the internet, I mean, you got to watch what you give yourself to. Guard your sight. Govern your speech. Guard your sight. These are things that will deteriorate eat away at a, at a person's spirituality just like that. Number three, God's Word in my life will guide my steps. When you allow the Word of God to renew your mind, it will guide where you walk. His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. I will not go to places that might cause me to sin. I just won't. I'll refuse. And if you try to take me into one of those places or whatever, I'll tell you too that this isn't conducive to Christianity. That... <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And so when, when the Apostle Paul, or when, 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 when Peter says, having your loin, the, 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 the loins of your mind girded, amen, what, what are we supposed to gird it with? The truth of God's Word. It's all about, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except by me. So I want truth in me. 
I want to I want to be around truth. I, I I don't want to be around deception. I don't want to listen to garbage. Amen. I just want to be around the truth. So if you allow God's word in your mind, it will produce three things. Number one, it'll govern your speech. It'll guard your sight, and it will guide your steps. As Hannah comes to the piano this morning. In conclusion. Now, I'm going I'm to give it to you. Welcome back, Bo. <laughs> Amen. A God-filled thought life will lead you to where the Word of God is preached and taught. They're inseparable. I can learn the plan and will of God for my life. From Genesis to Revelation, you, everybody in here, has a plan in the will of God. Everybody has a plan in the will of God. A God-filled thought life keeps me in a deep personal relationship with God. You can have a living, vibrant relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand this morning. I want to leave you with this. I'm going to tie it all up and put it on a platter for you this morning. Watch your thoughts because they become your words. And your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. And your habits become your character. And your character becomes your testimony. And your testimony determines your destiny. Let me say it again. Watch your thoughts. Because they become your words. And your words become your actions. And your actions become your habits. Your habits become your character, and your character becomes your testimony, and your testimony determines your destiny. The battle for the mind. Father, we thank you for your word here this morning. Lord, the truth that has been expressed here this morning, Lord. The vulnerability of our minds. Each and every one in here. No one is exempt from it. No one. No one. Our minds. Our minds. The things we think.